Hi, it's Tim from OracleBase.com. In this video, we'll take a look at a simple Vagrant build for an Oracle database. In a previous video, we covered the basics of Vagrant, so if you're new to it, you might want to watch that first. The build described here is one I've been using to test Oracle Database 19C on Oracle Linux 8. At the time of recording, that isn't a certified operating system for Oracle 19C, but I wanted to play with it. So we're in GitHub in my Vagrant repository. Let's just drill down into the database and then Oracle Linux 8, 19. And we can see this part of the repository is a build for Oracle 19C on Oracle Linux 8. This isn't a supported or certified platform at the moment. It's just something I wanted to play around with. You can see here the required software. This includes the database, Oracle REST data services, SQLCL, Apex, OpenJDK 12 and Tomcat 9. If we scroll down, there's an indication of what the folder structure should look like once all the software is in place. Let's have a look at the Vagrant file. So there's a bunch of variables here at the top that define assorted characteristics. I tend to use boxes from the Bento project because they're easily downloadable from Vagrant Cloud. But at the time of recording this, there isn't one for Oracle Linux 8. So I had to create my own, which is why you can see Oracle base slash OL8. Here we can see a number of different variables defined. So we've got the virtual machine name, the amount of memory we're allocating, the number of vCPUs that we're going to allocate. This property, non-rotational, just tells VirtualBox that this is running on SSD. We're going to add a couple of new virtual disks as well. So we've got their names and the sizes are going to be set to 100 gig. That's far too big, but it doesn't really matter because they're thin provisions, so they'll only be as big as they need to be. If we scroll down to the configure section, we can see that we set the box name. So that's telling Vagrant which box this VM is meant to be based on. We have some port forwarding defined. This is just saying that these ports in the guest OS match to the host OS so I can access them from the host using localhost. If we scroll down to the provider section, this is where we do some more configuration of the virtual machine. We can see we set the memory size, the number of vCPUs, and the virtual machine name. This parameter here tells VirtualBox that this is on SSD. That's the non-rotational parameter we set earlier. We're also going to add two virtual disks. So here what we do is check to see if the virtual disk exists. If it doesn't, we create it. And then we just say, hey, this is non-rotational. This is solid state. So just that setting similar to the one we saw earlier. And we do the same for the second disk. And then in the provisioning section, we're just going to run a shell script called setup. I tend to do that for most of my builds to keep them consistent. So let's have a look at what setup does. We can see this is pretty simple. It just calls the root setup script and runs it as root. So all of the real actions are done from the root user. If we take a look at this, we'll see there are several distinct sections. We want to prepare the U01, U02 mount points, install the operating system packages, create some directories, move the software into a location. We could actually install this from slash vagrant directly, but I want to put them in the U01 software directory so that they're there for future reference. Set up the user environment, install the Oracle software, run the root scripts, create the database, and then install the ORD software. And finally, set up a service to allow this to auto start. So let's look at these individual pieces, starting with the prepare U01, U02 disks. Here what we're doing, we've got a little function that partitions the disks, makes a file system on them, gets the UUID 
of the partition, puts an entry into etcfs tab and then mounts it. And we run this function for U01 and U02. The next thing in the list was install OS packages. Normally this is quite simple because we use the pre-install package to do most of this work for us. But that's not available for Oracle Linux 8 yet, so we have to do everything by hand. So you can see we're using DNF to install a whole bunch of packages. We're also setting kernel parameters and limits. And then I'm disabling the firewall. I wouldn't do this for a real system. I'm also turning SE Linux to permissive setting up the groups and the Oracle user. And because this is Oracle Linux 8, we have to fix a couple of things. So we need to put a couple of symbolic links in place to allow the database to install. So that's our operating system ready to go. So now we need to set up the user environment. What we do here is just build an environment script with a whole bunch of information in. So first off, the normal things we find in an installation to do with Oracle Base, Oracle Home, etc. But then I've also got some information specifically for the installation of both the database, Apex and ORDS. This includes password information, so this is a really stupid thing to do for a real system unless you have a step at the end to clean it all up. set up some start and stop scripts. They just source the environment file and use db start and db stop. So that's the environment set up. Now we've got to install the Oracle software. This should look pretty familiar to any DBAs out there. We just make the Oracle home directory, unzip the software into it, this is Oracle Linux 8 and it's not a supported platform so we fake it by setting this environment variable to say that it's Oracle Linux 7.6 and then we do a silent install just using run installer with the silent option. Once that's complete we have to run the root scripts as normal and then we're ready to create the database. If they're not already present, we build some network files. Assuming there isn't already a database there, which there shouldn't be, we start the listener and then we use the DBCA to do a silent database creation. Once the database is created, we're going to turn on Oracle Manage Files, save the pluggable database state so it automatically restarts. And then we want to flip the auto start flag in the ETC Aura tab. By default, I install Apex on everything. I go into the software directory, unzip the Apex software, CD into the Apex directory, and then I connect to the database and my pluggable database, create a table space called Apex, and then install Apex. I set up the admin user and then configure the Apex REST services. And finally, I just make sure the Apex public user has the correct password and is unlocked. Now we need to look at the installation of the ORD software. So this is pretty simple. All we do is unpack most of the things. So we unpack Java, Tomcat, and we create the Catalina base. Then we unpack the ORD software, and we unpack the Apex images into the web apps directory on Tomcat. We then have to configure ORDs. So we use all those parameters from our environment file to create a parameter file. Configure the ORDS config directory and configure ORDS itself. 
Once that's done, we then copy the ORDS WAR file into the web apps directory on Tomcat so it's ready to be deployed. Here we can see the config of HTTPS. And then what we do is stop everything. We'll see when we run this that this is going to cause an error because Tomcat hasn't been started and yet we're going to stop it. But I just want to make sure everything's turned off including the database as well. So with that done, the last thing to do is set up the Linux service that's going to auto start the database when the VM reboots. All we do is copy in a file that we've already prepared and then start and enable the service. And that's it. I've cloned the Vagrant repository, copied the software into the software directory and I can now run Vagrant up. First Vagrant builds the virtual machine using VirtualBox. We're now going through the step where we prepare the operating system. We can see all of the OS packages being installed. Now all the scripts and software are being copied into the UO1 software directory. The software has been unzipped into the Oracle home and now the software only installation has started. Once the root scripts are run we can start the listener and create the database using the DBCA. Once the database is created, we start installing Apex, and that's the output you can see now. Here's the Tomcat and ORDS configuration. We see this Java error because we've attempted to shut down Tomcat when it isn't actually running. The database has been shut down and then we start everything back up again using the Linux service. Let's connect to the virtual machine using Vagrant SSH. We can see a load of Oracle processes and the Tomcat process that's running ORDS. If we open a browser on our host machine and go to localhost port 8080 slash ORDS, we can see that Apex is available. So by just typing Vagrant up, we've done a complete build, including the database, Apex, ORDS, Tomcat, Java, etc. This shows how simple it is to build clean test environments using Vagrant. It's also a good way of practicing the automations you might want to include in a production environment. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.